In this video, I show you how you can make a play pause toggle button and cover off some additional considerations when creating your own navigation in responsive design. Okay, let's get started here. So first off, I want to apologize. I'm still a little bit under the weather, so my voice isn't 100%. So there may be the odd little vocal fry here and there, and for that I apologize. So here's what I've done. I've um, received uh, some questions regarding creating your own navigation controls, and I thought, well, I'll just do it in a video and then uh, share the information with everyone here. Um, so I've designed this uh, simple uh, next, back, and a play pause button that one of, uh, one of my colleagues was asking about. And I thought, you know, well, why not cover off a couple of things here? First off, how to do a play pause. Now, I'll say this up front. This play pause toggle button only works if you're not going to have a whole bunch of pauses throughout your course. Uh, in this case here, uh, I've just got a single slide set up, and it's about one minute long. And the play pause will work perfectly based on uh, a couple of things. It's taking advantage of a system variable, which I'll show you in a moment but it's also using an advanced action as well, a conditional advanced action. The other thing I wanted to briefly touch upon was, you know, this course got me thinking about, you know, button placement and things like that. Traditionally, with a desktop view in mind, we usually place them along the bottom. And, you know, usually the next is more to the right and the back is more to the left and maybe play pause is somewhere in the middle. Sometimes I've seen them a bit more to the right. Um, but I started thinking, you know what, we've got all these different breakpoints. Why not take advantage of making some changes with responsive design? So here I've done a desktop design. Now these buttons that I've created here, um, let's just bring up the position uh, tab and take a look at that. So. I first of all set the button size to be 10% of the uh, width of the uh, desktop view. And um, I've placed them along the bottom and using, of course, smart position. I'm a big fan of smart position because it allows you to place objects in responsive design very precisely so that they work across different breakpoints. So here, no matter what size desktop view I'm, I'm working with, these buttons will always be 2% from the bottom of the page. So if I open this on a desktop view that's slightly different than the default settings here, doesn't matter, they'll be along the bottom. Now, I decided that with a tablet view, I sort of thought about how I hold my tablet. I hold my tablet with two hands, uh, with my thumbs kind of overlapping in front of the screen and I use my thumbs for typing or for navigation on control. Uh, so I just did it different though. This is the custom tablet breakpoint. So I moved the back and next buttons to be center aligned. Okay, and the, the back button is 2% from the left hand side of the page. The next button is 2% away from the right-hand side of the page. And the pause, the play pause control, I thought right below the, um, you know, the, uh, the next button would be an appropriate spot. I, th I sort of thought about down here, but then I thought, again, okay, where are the thumbs for, uh, you know, or, or where are the fingers, at the very least the thumbs, uh, if you're holding your tablet in landscape view? Similarly, in portrait view, I thought, well, pretty much the same thing. I'm just holding it a little closer together. Now, mobile phone is different quite a bit of times with mobile phone. Um, you know, you're holding it with one hand. So what I did there is I put all three controls, the back button at the top, because it's probably the least likely to be used, the play pause in the middle, and then the next button, which is the button that most people are going to press, uh, on the bottom part here. So let's take a closer look at what these individual buttons do, regardless of where they're positioned. So in the case of the, um, the back and the next, 
I didn't worry too much about multi states because I thought, you know what, this course in this particular instance, I'm dealing with a touch environment. There is really no need for a rollover effect uh, because unless you're using a mouse, you know, a rollover effect is, uh, is pointless because with your fingers, you can't have a rollover effect. So I skipped that. These are very simple back and next buttons. But I did use multi-state objects on the play pause button. And let's go to the properties tab and take a look at that. So the default state is, you see the pause button. That doesn't mean that the button is paused or that the, the course is paused. When you see a pause button, that means that you're playing, right? Pause is what you would be turning on if you press this button. So let's take a look at the state view. And you can see here that I have the normal state, which is playing. And then the pause state will show a play button because if you press it, it will take it off pause and start playing. Now, I deleted the, um, the built-in states, the inbuilt states, if you will, uh, for this particular button, which were simply duplicates uh, or duplicates of the, the pause button. So I just have the two states here because that's all I want for this particular case here. So let's exit from the, uh, the state view and uh, go back here. So what I've taken advantage of is I've done a little bit of a conditional action on this and let's, I've called it toggle play. And let's take a closer look at the advanced action for this. So the advanced action is, that, like I said, a conditional action. In other words, it's basically an if-then statement. It's called toggle play. And it looks at the system variable cp command pause. Now cp command pause has one of two states. It's either uh, a value of one or a value of zero. When it's a value of one, that means the course is paused. If it's a value of zero, the course is playing. So it says if the course is paused, in this case here, we're gonna change the state of button three to normal, right? Normal is the playing state. And we're going to continue the course. So in other words, this action is taking it off pause and allowing it to continue to play. Now, part of an if then statement is also an else statement, part of that. So if this is not true, then we're gonna run these commands here. So we're gonna change the state of the button to paused, right? If, we're, if, if this condition is not met, we're going to change the state of button three to paused, and then we're gonna pause the course. So in other words, when I click this button, it's gonna look at what's the current playing state of this project. And if it's paused, it's going to start playing it. So it's gonna continue and change the state of the button back to normal. If the condition is that the course is not paused, it's playing, then it is going to change the state of the button to paused and then put the course on pause. So basically the two things. Let me close this here and show you what this looks like. We'll just do a quick preview of this and we'll do the whole project. Now I've left the play bar in so that you can confirm that my play buttons are doing what they're supposed to be doing. So there's there's the, uh, the pause control there. Let me uh, hit play. So again, I've pressed it. I've got the, the play button has become a play button. As you can see, the same thing is happening down in there. So I can go pause, play, pause, play, pause, play. This works perfectly. Again, the only thing is, is that this is great for a course or a project that runs from slide one to slide 100 without automatically pausing and gives the user full control of play pause. Uh, as you can see, it's still running right now. If I was to introduce an automatic pause here, uh, in fact, I can simulate that. If I pause it from the regular toolbar, obviously it doesn't update my play pause toggle button. 
haven't thought of a solution for that right now. If anyone has any great ideas, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. So go ahead and, and make suggestions and maybe we'll make a part two of this video. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.